Let me try it again. Did you make it? No, I didn't. Are you ready? Okay. Go ahead and start whenever you want. Uh, I'm Bobby. My name is Ariel. I'm Tommy. I'm Serena. And I'm Aliana. And our group is Media and Media Literacy. So media is always <clears throat> is not always an online or physical distraction of procrastination plat platform. While some may be addicted to their social media networks, newspapers, and it's <clears throat> one of the best ways to stay informed, major new outlets, corporations, and persons have introduced social media to deliver messages to the masses. With item, <clears throat> item posting, immediately the, the public says um, the public stays informed. Some issues cause controversy, but social media does more good to them than harm in the retrospect. <clears throat> According to a study conducted by uh, Professor Hefner at uh, a college, students who were able to utilize Twitter for education purposes increase their GPAs. 38% of the survey students claim that their GPAs rose, I mean, decreased 25% that uh, took the survey declined to respond, and another 38% said that their GPAs increased as well. Um, while media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram news, and newspaper outlets are certainly tools for organizations that want to track their own interests on the web, they also provide entertainment information as an opportunity for us to keep us uh, to keep track of old friends and to keep us up to date on information and situations that are going on into the world. So today, me and my group will talk about the nature of the nature and the scope of media, understanding how media works and guidelines for enhancing the effect of media with digital, well, with mass and digital media. And uh, Tommy will be talking. All right, so I'll, I'll be talking to you all about the nature and scope of media. So the first form of media I would like to discuss with you is mass media. The nature of mass media is to exchange an individual's message to a large audience through electrical or mechanical channels. Some example could be seen on, say, television, newspaper, magazines, books, and many more. According to Walden University, forms of forms of could be from advertisements from businesses art slash culture, and in TV shows of a scope that updates millions of people nationally and internationally. Now that I have talked to you about mass media, I would like to now like, now I would, I would now like to inform you about uh, social media. What social media is, is when one uses computer mediated tools that allow people and organizations to create and share photos videos and information for personal, social, political, and professional reasons. Examples of social media would be emails, tweets, um, Instagrams, texts, and posting whatever you want, like in YouTube, comments, and so forth. Uh, social media allows people to interact co actively, collaborate, and participate within communities. The primary usage of social media are um, manipulation, convergence, and speed. Media can manipulate people because it can alter photos by using Photoshop functions such as clone stamping and this pickle uh, filter. It can also be used to learn what reality is. Like for example, according to Oxford University, Political parties, for example, uses social media to manipulate people by spreading disinformation and junk news in order to change and manipulate voters. <coughs> now, I would like to talk to you about um, convergence. Convergence, convergence of social media make it um, inexpensive to have international conversations, making people more willing to use social media which is all possible through the transmission of sound and visual images, which are all managed on a single network. <coughs> and, what I'm, and what I mean about speed is that which, with digital devices, 
him takes little to no time to um, to get into contact with others. And, but it can also unfortunately cause conflict because uh, since your post can be can't be undone in undone in the world called cyberspace. Uh, through circumstances such as screenshotting um, one's post uh, that can be shared like worldwide so they could repost it to other people. Now that I have informed you all about the nature and the scope of media, Serena will now inform you about understanding how media works. So I'll be telling you about how media works and that you should consider the ways we use mass and social media, also the ways that they affect us. First, I'll be informing you about mass media. There are four key ways in which mass media tries to influence in our lives. The first one is mass media provides gratification. Think about the last time you watched a movie or show. Did you watch it because it pertained actors that you enjoyed? Did you choose it because the story mattered or did it somehow relate to you in some way? According to uses of gratification theory, we use mass communication to gratify ourselves to Reinhard and Durbin. So uses and gratification theory says we use mass media to fulfill our needs and desires. We also use media to gain info, alleviate loneliness, divert us from our problems, and many other reasons. The second key way is that mass media sets agendas. Mass media spotlights some issues, events, and has some people downplay others. This affects our views on what is and isn't happening to our world and what's important. Agenda setting is selecting and calling out the public's attention. Some and not other ideas, events, people, and other perspectives. TV and newspapers make us aware of the sexual activities of public figures, whether they are real or rumors. The gatekeeper is a person or group that decides which messages to let through the gates of media in order to reach consumers. The third key is mass media cultivate worldviews. The cultivation theory claims that television promotes a worldwide view of inaccuracy, but viewers assume it reflects on real life. TV shapes our beliefs and our social realities. The final key is mass media exercise ideological influence in which Mass media influences in ways we don't notice, and it clearly supports dominant ideologies to a significant extent. So I just informed you about understanding mass media. Now I will inform you about understanding social media. There is no mainstream news about dom news that dominates the web. Social media offers us more options for gratifying ourselves than mass media does. We have nearly infinite choices for pleasure, competitive info, conversation, and collaboration. For example, Facebook, we use it to make friends and create posts. It, we can participate in communities that gratify our, our, varied, our various needs and desires. The four principles of social media that help us understand how they fit, the first one is social media, blur production and consumption. Social media are increasingly produced and consumed by the same people, and most of them aren't social media executives, they're just ordinary people. So for example, like Instagram, Snapchat, and all that, where they, where like you guys post like your daily activities and what you guys do. And then next, the next key is social media alters conceptions of space. Social media changes the ways we create and participate in our communities and redefining our sense of space. Cyberspace is a social place in which dynamic actions and interactions actually constitute the environment. So basically cyberspace isn't something that exists prior to our interactions. It is what we do in cyberspace that defines space. So for example, when using Facebook, your community changes as your friends, as you friend and unfriend people. Once you do that, you produce a different community. The next, the last key is social media invites super saturation. Sometimes we may feel overwhelmed and stressed by the info available to us that we believe Google should always be the key to our answers. So according to Staple, 
Social media allows nearly instant, constant contact with other people, and at the same time, these media give others greater access to us than before. Social media encourage multitasking during classes. You may take notes while also texting and cheating. I mean, checking favorite websites, but it is really multitasking. People do not really do multitask at once. They just do one task at a time. They just do each task quickly, sorry, very quickly. So now that I have informed you about understanding how media works, Miriam will inform you about guidelines for enhancing your effectiveness in TV and mass digital media. Because mass and social media penetrate our lives, we need to be responsible and thoughtful about how we use them. This requires us to develop, to develop media literacy. According to our book, Communication in Our Lives, media literacy is the ability to understand the influence of mass media and to access, analyze, evaluate, and respond accurately to mass media in informed critical ways. The picture of the star includes the components of mass media, which include analyze, evaluate, respond, and understand. The first component would be understand. Media literacy begins with understanding the extent to which social or mass media influence us. We interact in complex ways. We do not absorb whatever is given to us. Instead, we interact thoughtfully and critically with media to mediate how we, uh, they affect us, how they affect our identities, and what they encourage us to believe, think, feel, and do. According to an article by an unknown author called Media Literacy, Fundamentals, it states that media education encourages young people to use multimedia tools critically, a strategy that contributes to the understanding by doing and prepares them for a workforce, workforce that demands the use of forms of communication. Like stated in our book, if we choose to interact thoughtfully with media to control their impact on us, we can embrace questions about access to media and deliberate choices of how to engage them. Now that I've talked about the first component of media literacy, I'll be talking about the second one, which is access. Access is the capacity to own and use TVs, tablets, computers, phones, and so forth. You may think that access is not an issue, but not everyone has and regularly uses four or more personal media as well as engaged with mass media. According to our book, Communication in Our Lives, the term digital divide refers to the gap between people and communities with access to media. Media, especially social media, requires knowledge and resources that not everyone has. Access to technologies is limited between people who are already privileged and by their social and people who are not. We will see an increase between haves and haves nots. In addition to the issue of access to media, communication, each of us faces a personal challenge in choosing what we attend. Many people only access media that supports their personal views. The problem with this is that you do not give yourself the opportunity to learn more about different positions. To be truly informed about any issues, we must attend to different sources of information and perspectives. Now that I've talked about the two components of media literacy, Ariana will talk about the next year. <coughs> so I'm first going to start off by talking about analyzing media. When we analyze something, we will know and understand how it works. For example, if you're unaware of the grammatical structure and rules of the English language, then you can't write, read, or speak English effectively. The same concept goes for the media. If you don't know the patterns for the media, then you won't fully understand how programming and advertising work. There are a few common patterns that the media uses frequently. A common pattern used in the media, uh, in the entertainment media like films and televisions, is when they would often open with some problem or conflict that progresses it that progresses until it climaxes in final dramatic scenes. The media also relies on standard patterns when sharing the news. Um, they use three distinct related features when constructing the news. The first feature is selecting what gets covered. In this area, gatekeepers in the media decide which people and events are newsworthy. The, third, the second feature is choosing the hook. This is where reporters choose how to focus their story or try to grab people's attention into their story. They do this by directing people's attention to one aspect of the story. The third feature is choosing how to tell the story. Each way of telling the story encourages the audience to feel and think a certain way about the story. For example, the media might tell a story in a way that encourages sympathy for the person 
who claims to have been the target of sexual misconduct by being angry with the victim and making references to other victims of sexual misconduct. I talked about analyzing media. Now I will talk about critically evaluating media messages. Um, according to an article created by Hootsuite.com, nearly a billion people view stories across WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. This is significant because nowadays, people rely on social media for news and stories, but we gotta know that some of these stuff are, um, that some of these news are false. So when interacting and engaging in mass communication, we should critically think about what is being presented. Instead of just accepting what is being shown, you should ask yourself questions like, why is this story getting so much attention? Whose interests are served? Are stories balanced to our range of viewpoints or given voice? What's the hook of the story and what alternative hooks might have been used? One of the most popular advertising strategies is called puffery. Um, puffery uses supposed claims as some facts but they are actually meaningless. And you can see on the side where it says Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. That's an example of puffery. And when you see that, you wanna ask yourself, who judged it to be the better pizza? It has better ingredients in comparison to what? Like, is it better than Pizza Hut or Round Tables? Um, according to Jacqueline Vilt, a professional writer and editor from Sculpture.com, about 57% of millennials feel that ads are becoming more relevant. So keep an eye out for puffery. Also, keep an eye on claims that sound or look like facts. According to Rayford Steele, a communication professor, the newer media tempt people to rely on pure opinions rather than expert authority. In the online world, everyone makes statements and claims but the problem with that is that not everyone is equally qualified to make certain claims. Now that I talked about analyzing media and critically evaluating messages, Bobby will talk about responding actively. So when we look at responding actively, the first thing we look at is what is responding actively. Responding actively is just not looking <coughs> for ourselves personally. It also requires us to become involved in the thinking about how media influence uh, cultural life and how it's uh, if all media should be regulated people may say re responding actively so there's two types so uh, responding actively there's two types of responding you can respond passively or actively of course um, so according to our mind tab, mind tab textbooks if we are responding passively we mindlessly consume messages that values inflicted explicit in them, and on the other hand, if we respond actively, we recognize that the worldwide views presented to us in the mass communications are not presented uh, in truth <coughs> and are unnourished. Yeah. Subject, person, perspectives that serve the interests of some individuals and groups while discouraging or mis uh, disregarding or misrepresenting the interests of others. And the other thing how we looked at is how people respond to mass media and other outlets. Uh, responding actively to mass communication includes choosing consciously how and when to use it, uh, questioning what is presented, and involve yourself in the controversies about media, particularly never uh, technical, particularly the never technology tech. Technological forms. So, in conclusion, the mass media has changed our lives so much. Our life became more convenient because mass media is a very useful tool for us in the 21st century. It can help us improve our life. However, we have to be aware how we use it. If we could use the mass media smartly, it would become a good change for us. While media like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the news, and its outlets are certainly tools for organizations that want to attract our interest on the web. They also provide entertainment, information, and an opportunity for us to keep track of our old friends, to keep us up to date on information and situations that are going on in the world. So today, my group and I informed you about the nature and scope of media, understanding how media works, the guidelines of enhancing your effectiveness with mass and digital media.
three people in the middle. You could still win, it would just be an upset. <laughs> Oh, you're still talking to me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, how do you use media? I'm going to be raising a punk for her. God damn it. <laughs> mm, that's so good. Let me just, you know, telephone my groupmates. <laughs> she, she met, she met her. Five steps? Five steps. No, which one does it start with? Oh, we'll begin with? Start with a particular one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have no idea. And I can. Background. Thank you. 